Hey friends, <clears throat> what's up and welcome back to Babylon Time with Friends. You hear my voice? It's like so stark. It's like very chazak. Now, I'll warn you, I'll be honest, you might hear me coughing from time to time, but I mean, friends, friends, what do you think? It's very nice, right? Yeah. All right, what do you want me to tell you? Wow. It went away after three weeks. Uh, I, uh, all right, no more, uh, not taking uh, any more uh, booster shots this week. Friends, let's move on. We're going to learn together, Daf. Uh, <coughs> as I said, I might, I might cough from time to time, but uh, big adult, I think we're okay. Friends, we're going to learn <coughs> Daf Dal of Masechta Megillah today, um, continuing talking about in walled cities and non-walled cities and reading the Megillah, things like this and some other very interesting things along the way. Friends, let's do this. We're going to start on Daf uh, Gimel Mubez all the way at the end. <coughs> Excuse me. Vamar Bishua ben Levi. Says of Bishua ben Levi. What does he say? Lod v'onu v'geach roshim mukafas chomim v'mos v'shua ben nun havu. All right, what do you want me to tell you? That Lod, Ono, Geachroshim, and Muka, uh, were walled cities from the days of Yoshua ben Nun. All right, friends, don't forget that. Vahani Yoshua Banoni. In fact, my wait a second. Did Yoshua really build these cities for El Paal Banoni? They were built by El Paal. Who's that? Wow. Dechsev, as the pasuk says, Uvni El Paal Ever Umishom Vishemer. All right, that the children. Of uh, El Paal were Aver, Mishum, and Shemer. Hubana is Ono, and he, El Paal, built Ono, Ves Lod, as well as Lod, Uvnosa, and its daughters. Alright, what do you want me to tell you? Well, the time, and in fact, give me one second. But according to that logic, that because the Pazuk says that El Paal built it, so we're assuming that he built it, well, Asa Banoni, should we say that Asa built these places? Dikhsevis it says Vaivin Asa, even though technically this Pasuk doesn't exist, but Vaivin Asa is Arya Batsura Sashar the Yehuda? That Asa built these uh, walled cities in Yehuda? Omar Balazar, Han Mukavas Khomim Mashua, Mimos Yoshua, Binun, Havu. So Rablazar says, listen, friends, this is Pshat, that these cities were built during the days of Yoshua. Kharu Bime Pilagish Begiva. With the whole episode with the Pilegish Begiva, uh, where all the Yidin got very upset with Binyamin and it was a whole thing. So then they got um, destroyed. Vas El Pa'al Banoni, El Pa'al then rebuilt it. Hodr Inpul, they fell down again. Also, Aso, Shabtinu, and Asa came and like fixed, I guess, like the city and the walls and stuff like that. The Ganami, you can also infer it. It says, Vayom of the Yehuda, Nivne Esa Ele, that. He said to Judah, let's build these cities, which means that they were already cities from before. And, all right, friends, what do you want me to tell you? These places are walled cities from Yoshua Benun. Although that's actually extremely interesting because Lod and also Ono, is that like Kiryat Ono? There's also a school called Ono. Uh, ono, yeah, what is it called? Mechlelet Ono or something? I once had to go there when I was a student at Pizzalo. We did some kind of project involving the, the the college in Ono. Um, all right. Anyways, um, so what, wait, but what does that mean? So like load, what, do they keep Shushan Purim? I mean, Mistominat, I only know about Yerushalayim. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, that's, let's talk a very interesting one, I said. From Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. And says Rabbi Shuvan Levi, Noshim Chayovos B'Mikum Megillah Sha'afin Hoyu Ba'os Hanes. Friends, that while in general mitzvahs essay she has man gama Noshim Peturos. While in general women are um, uh, exempt from mitzvahs essay she has man gama uh, positive commandments that are time bound. However, reading of the Megillah, women are uh, obligated in because. Because they were also included in the miracle. Rashi says that um, they were also, they had their necks on the line. Haman was going to kill everybody. The men, the women, the children, everybody. And therefore, the miracle and the celebration and the recounting of the miracle applies to everybody involved. 
And therefore, even though Kriyas Megillah is a mitzvah's essay, she has man grama, nonetheless, Nashim are chayavos. The Amr, Rabbi Shobin Levi says, Rabbi Shobin Levi, Purim Shcholios Bishabos. That if you have Purim that falls out on the Sabbath, okay, so the 14th day of Adar is on Shabbos. Shoalan Vidarshin Vinyano Shel Yom. So on Shabbos, we can give a drasha, we can give a shear about Purim. So if Purim falls out on Shabbos, on Shabbos we can give a drasha about Purim. Ma'iri Purim, Afili Yom Tivnami. Fact the Gemara, what's special about Purim? Every time there's a Yom Tiv, we give a drasha about the Yom Tiv on Shabbos. The Tanya, or the Tanan, as we learn in the Mishnah. No, the Tanya, as we talk learn in the Brayse. Moshe Tikin Loim the Yisrael, Moshe Rabbeinu made a takon and an acronym for the Yidden, Sheyu Shayal and Vidarshim Ben Yonah Shayom, that they should give drashas, that they should be studying the 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 topics, the subjects of the day. Hilchus Pesach be Pesach, Hilchus Tzeres be Tzeres, Hilchus Chok be Chok. That on Pesach they study about Passover, on Tzeres and Shavuos they study about Tzeres, on Sukkot they study about Sukkot. So what's the chiddush about Purim? Every time there's a festival, uh, the Yidden uh, study and give uh, drashas shiurim about that festival. So why does Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi need to point out that when Purim falls out on Shabbos, so they give a Joshua about Purim, Purim it's three, Purim it's three chalei, that there's a chiddush when it comes to Purim. Oh, oh, oh. friends, the Gzera de Rabba is the third time we are seeing the Gzera de Rabba. We're going to see it later on, on the daf, at the end of the daf today. But we saw it in the context of um, uh, Lulav. We saw it in the context of Shofar. We are now seeing it in the context of, in the context of Mikra Megillah. That Rabbah is concerned that on Shabbos we don't read the Megillah because uh, we don't want people to uh, accidentally carry it for Amos and Rishus Rabbim in order to go somewhere to learn how to read it. And therefore we might think that just like we don't read the Megillah on Shabbos, we also don't give Shi'urim about the Megillah on Shabbos. So Kamash Mulan what Rabbi Yeshua Malevi is teaching us is that, no, even though we don't read the Megillah when Purim falls out on Shabbos, however, we can give Shi'urim on the halachis of uh, Purim on Shabbos. From Rabbi Yeshua Malevi, says Rabbi Yeshua Malevi, Chayv Odom Likros Asa Megillah Balaylo V'lishanos Abayom Says Rabbi Yeshua Malevi that a fellow is obligated to read Megillah at night and Nochamol and a second time during the day. So we listen to the Megillah at night and during the day. Friends, uh, I'm a Megillah reader. If anybody is here in Eretz Yisrael, in Yerushalayim, um, I'd be happy to read the Megillah for you. At night and during the day. Shinemar, as the Pasuk says, Elokai ekra yomam v'losayne v'layla v'lodumili that, that it says in the Pasuk, in the uh, capital of Bez of Tehillim, that that's the Tehillim of Lamanatech ala Yeles Ashachar, Keli Keli Loma Azavtoni. That is the capital of Tehillim, and it says in that capital, which is a reference to, to Esther, Elokai Eker Yomim Velosayne, I call out during the day <laughs> and you don't answer. But I live and uh, night uh, and I'm not quiet. I guess so. I guess the implication being that uh, we read the Megillah at night and during the day. Sover mina the Mikaya but I live the Mishnah must listen to you, Mama. They thought maybe what it <laughs> means is that we read the Megillah at night, but during the day we learn the Mishnayos of Masech to Megillah. Maybe that's what it means. When it says Vilishanosa, maybe it doesn't mean to read the Megillah a second time. Maybe it means Lishanosa. Right, um, right, um, um, to the shano to teach, to learn Mishnayis, Mesech the Megillah. Amulu, Rabbi Yirmiyah says, Rabbi Yirmiyah said, Rabbi Yirmiyah, the Didi Mefarshali Mine to Rabbi Chibaraba. It was explained to me in the name of Rabbi Chibaraba. Kigon, for example, Damer Intre, like the people say, ever Parsha Sadov Esnaye. Let me review. Let right, let me um, learn this uh, passage and then learn it a second. 
time. I eat to repeat. So it means it means to read the Megillah at night and to read it Nochamo to repeat it during the day. Itmar and Amir's talk also stated Amr Khelbo Amr Ula. So some Khelbo in the name of Ula <coughs> in the name of Ula Bayro'o. Chayv Adam Likos Sam Megillah Balaila the Shanosa Bayom. A fellow is obligated to read the Megillah at night and to repeat it uh, a second time. Shinema as the Pazuk says, the manizam echo chavud veloido that I will sing to you honor and will not be quiet. Hashem Eloka Lala Madeka, the Abishter is my God, I will always uh, pray, I will always be thankful to you. And therefore, right, so Laman Yismech, Chavod Veloidom, honor and I will not be quiet, that's a reference to the reading Megill at night and Nochamol during the day. Alright, sounds like a lot of fun. As Shakfar Maktimino Maknisa says the Mishnah, that the villages <laughs> are able to bump up reading the Megillah to the um, days when they would come into the larger cities for uh, <coughs> judgments and stuff. Omar B'chanino, says B'chanino, Chachom me'kelo ala kfarim liyos magdil min liyom ha'knisa. Says B'chanino, that the sages were lenient on the villages liyos magdil min liyom ha'knisa, that to enable them, to allow them to read the Megillah earlier, right, on Monday or Thursday preceding in order so that they should be available to provide water and food for their brethren in the larger cities on Purim. So this sounds like, you know, who, who are we benefiting over here? Over here we're really benefiting the um, larger cities, right? So that the people in the larger cities can have the things that they need for, for Purim, we allow the villagers who supply the larger cities to read the Megillah early so that they'll be available to service the, the people in the larger cities on Purim. So does that imply that the, the, the enactment that when we say that the villages can, the people in the villages can read Megillah earlier, it's in order to support the uh you know to 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 sort of provide for the cities the larger cities we learn in the mishnah that if purim falls out on a monday the villages and the large cities read on that day on monday and if we were so concerned about um sort of providing a benefit for the large cities well, in that case, the village people should be able to read already from the Thursday prior. Because if they read on the Thursday prior, then on that Monday, which is Purim, they'll be available to um, provide for the people in, in the cities. And therefore, right, if, if we're concerned about, about providing for and servicing and providing a benefit for the people in the city, well then, even when Purim falls out on a Monday... The villagers should be able to read it the Thursday previous. But and for the Gemara, Havilu Asar Basar Takinu Rabbanan, the problem with that is that if the 14th of other is a Monday, so then the 10th of other would be, um, that if the 14th of other is a Monday, so then the prior Thursday would be the 10th of other, which is too early because as we learned in the Mishnah, it only starts on the 11th. Um, Toshma. But one second, the Mishnah says that if the 14th of Adar falls out on a Thursday, so the villages and the cities read on Thursday. And if it's true that we're interested in providing a benefit for the people in the larger cities, well then, the people from the villages should be already, should be allowed to read the Megillah on thir- on, on, on Monday. Right? If, if Purim falls out on Thursday, let the people in the villages read the Megillah on Monday, which is the 11th of Adar, which is the first possible day that they're allowed to, right, which is an allowed day. So let them do that, and then they'll be available on Thursday to provide for the people in the cities. That it's the 11th of Adar, that's an allowed day. We say, yeah, but we don't bump up from one Yom HaKnisa to another Yom HaKnisa, right? Yom HaKnisa days, of course, being the days when the, when the judges sit in the big cities. 
So, right, and that's Monday and Thursday. And we don't bump up from one Yom HaKnisa to another Yom HaKnisa. And therefore, even though, yes, if the 14th of Adar is Thursday, then Monday would be the 11th of Adar. And technically, that's a day that you're allowed to read the Megillah. But nonetheless, we don't bump up from one Yom HaKnisa, in this case, Thursday, to another Yom HaKnisa, which would be Monday. Toshma, come in here. Um, Rabbi Yehuda says, Rabbi Yehuda, a Mosai. When do we say that the people in the villages are allowed to read Megillah early? In a place where they actually generally go to the larger cities on Monday and Thursday. If you're a villager who normally goes, right? If these villages, they, the people normally go to the larger city on Mondays and Thursdays. So then, when it comes Purim time, when, they, when they're going to the larger cities anyways, so they can chaperain Megillah when they go to the larger cities, even if it's the 11th, 12th, or 13th. However, says Rabbi Huda, that in a place, is a mission we're going to get to tomorrow, in a place where the villages, right, villages that do not normally go to the larger cities on, the, on Mondays and Thursdays, well, in that case, then... Um, they may not read Megillah early. But but if it's true that the whole point of the enactment of the villagers being able to read early is in order to service and provide a benefit for the people in the large cities, well then, what, just because the people in the villages don't normally go into the larger cities on Monday and Thursday, the larger cities have to lose out? If the whole point of allowing right, the dispensation for the people of the villages to be able to read Megillah early is in the service of the people of the city, so then who cares if they normally go into the larger cities on Monday and Thursday? At the end of the day, what we want to do is we want to provide a benefit for the people in the larger cities. So regardless of whether... <coughs> These people from the villages normally come into the larger cities on Mondays and Thursdays. They should be able to read Megillah early on the Yom HaKnisa so that they'll be available to provide for the people in the cities, in the larger cities, on, 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 on Purim. So, and for the Gemara, lo teima kadeshi yisab gumai mamazun el eima mipnei shem yisab gumai mamazun lachem shibikrochem. So don't say that it's, that, we, that they can read the Megillah early in order so that they can uh, provide a benefit for their brethren in the larger cities. No, it's that it's because they provide services and benefits for the people in the larger cities. Meaning, if they normally, um, 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 if these villages are accustomed to normally providing services and benefits for the people in the larger cities, so therefore as a reward for that and in order to support them in their endeavors, so then we allow them to read the Megillah early when they come in for the Yom HaKnisa so that they'll be available on Purim in order to, um, in order to, 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 to be able to provide a service um, to benefit the people in the um, cities, right? And therefore, um, so we're not saying <laughs> that the point is that, right, this is not focused around the people in the cities, right? So we're not saying that the people in the villagers the people in the villages can read Megillah early so that they'll be available to, for the benefit of the people in the cities. That's not the point. The point is that because these people in the villages normally provide these benefits and these services for people in the cities in order to support them so that they will be available on Purim in order to be able to provide these services. So we allow them to um, read Megillah early when they come in anyways for Monday and uh, Thursday. The Mishnah had continued. Okay, so he said, so if Purim falls out on a Monday, so then the villages and the large cities read on that day. So How come the Mishnah started off by mentioning the days of the month and then we start talking about the days of the week? First we start saying Megillah Nikres, Biyud Aleph, Biyud Beis, Biyud Gimel Yudal Betezvav. Right, that uh, on the 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th of the month. So we're talking about the day of the month. And then we start saying if Purim is on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, also we're talking about days of the week. So I did the Mishap Okay, apparently uh, if it would stick to the days of the month and trying to explain the days of the week, it would get confusing. And we don't want to confuse the people. So the Gemara sticks to the method and the, the, the Mishnah sticks to the approach that, that, that it deems would be the easiest to comprehend, and that would be 
to start off with the days of the month to say that the <laughs> earliest day of the month the Megillah can be read is the 11th, the latest is the 15th, and then in explaining how exactly this works out, um, the 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 Mishnah determined that the easiest way to explain that would be by by from the perspective of the day <laughs> of the day of the week. Um, okay, sounds like very very fun stuff. Okay, <laughs> said the Mishnah. <laughs> so if uh, Purim falls out, if the fourteenth <laughs> of Adar falls out on the on on Friday, ooh, so we said that. No, what what happens? So the um, the villages could read <laughs> the day before on Thursday. The larger cities and the walled cities read on Friday. Okay. Maslisa money, Irebi, Irebiosi, Uwa. So our mission could be either Rebbe or Rebiosi. My Rebbe. So, what, uh, no? Tell us more about this Rebbe. The Tan is, we learn it in the price. So, Chalil's Bear of Shabbos. Okay. So, if the 14th day of Odor falls out on a Friday, for in Bayoros Gedolos, Makdimen Lioma Knisa. Interesting. So, says the Tanakama that the villages as well as the large cities, when the 14th of other is on a Friday, the villages as well as the large cities read on Thursday, which is the 13th. Interesting. So even though normally the large cities read on the 14th, in this case, when um, Purim falls out on Friday, the large cities will talk read on the 13th on Thursday. Okay. Umukafen um, Chomakorim and the walled cities read the Megillah on Friday, which is the 14th of Adar. Rabbi Omer, Omer Ani, says Rabbi that his opinion is, Lo yidachu ayaris No, leave the cities alone. The cities always read the Megillah on the 14th of Adar. And therefore, when the 14th of Adar is Friday, they still read the Megillah on the 14th of Adar. Rather, both the... Um, Walled cities as well as the large unwalled cities read the Megillah on the 14th of Adar on Friday, um, and therefore our Mishnah can be Rebbe. My time with the Tanakama. How come the Tanakama says that the um, large cities would read the Megillah on Thursday? So, <laughs> because the Pasuk says, um, to be making these two days at the proper time uh, every year. So every every single year. Just like every year the cities precede the right, right. The um, the unwalled cities precede the walled cities, right? Every year, the um, large cities read the Megillah on the fourteenth, and the walled cities read the Megillah on the fifteenth. So, just like every year, um, the unwalled cities precede the walled cities by a day. So, Afkan Ayaros Kodman Lemukafin. So here also, um, uh, here also, uh, when 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 Purim falls out on a Friday, the um, unwalled cities will precede the walled cities by a day, and therefore, if the walled cities in this case need to read the Megillah on Friday, on which is the fourteenth, which is Friday, so then the unwalled cities will read the Megillah a day before on Thursday, which is the thirteenth. But one second, why don't we say that when we compare every single year? Just like every single year, we don't push off the unwalled cities and they read on the 14th of Adar. So, see here as well, we should say that do not push off the unwalled cities. Let them read on the, their proper time on Friday, which is the 14th. So, to which the Tanakhama would reply, but in this case, what can we do? What can we do? It's not possible. Meaning, yes, in most years, the uh, unwalled cities would read the Megillah on the 14th. However, in this case, we have to push them off to the 13th so that they will be able to precede the walled cities. The Rebbe, my timer, my timer, how come Rebbe says, no, actually, 
the walled cities and the unwalled cities. We'll read the Megillah on Friday on the 14th. So, B'choshone V'shone, the Pasuk says every single year, B'choshone V'shone, Enayos Nidachin Mimikomon, just like every single year, the cities are not <laughs> pushed off from their normal day, and they read the Megillah on the 14th of Adar. So, Afkan Lo Yidachu Ayos Mimikomon, Sihir Oichit, this year as well, when Purim falls out on Friday, do not push off the unwalled cities from their normal place, i.e., they should read the Megillah on Friday on the 14th with the walled cities. But one second, maybe say like the Tanakhama that we compare every year, that just like every year the unwalled cities precede the walled cities by a day. So here Oichet, the unwalled cities should precede the walled cities by a day and the unwalled cities should read on Thursday. Like the Tanakhama suggests, Shani Yachadul Efshir. To which Rabbi says, Yeah, but here, what can we do? It's impossible. Yes, normally most years, the unwalled cities precede the walled cities by a day. However, in this case, um, it's just not possible because the 14th is when the unwalled cities read, and they have to read it on the 14th, and the walled cities are unable to read it on Shabbos. They have to read it on the 14th. So they both read it on the 14th. That year, the unwalled cities will not be preceding the walled cities. What do you want me to tell you? Says, Rabbi, my Rabbi Yossi, what's Rabbi Yossi? We had said that the Mishnah, which says that the walled cities and the unwalled cities both read on Friday on the 14th. We said it could also be Rabbi Yossi. No, tell me more about Rabbi Yossi. The Tanya, as we talk about in the Bible, if Purim falls out on a Friday, the Mukafin, 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 the walled cities, as well as the um, um, villages, Magdim and Yomaknisa. Wow. So the walled cities are talking, going to read on the, on, on Thursday, right? So again, Purim is on Friday. The villages are going to read the day earlier on Thursday, which is the 13th, as well as the walled cities. The walled cities that normally read the next day on the 15th are actually going to read, they're not going to read on Shabbos, they're going to read on Thursday on the 13th with the villagers. Bayoris, Gedolos, Korim, Bobayom, and the large unwalled cities will read the Megillah on Friday, which is its proper day, the 14th. Rabbi Yossi Omer, whereas Rabbi Yossi says, in Mukafin Kodmin Ayoris, says Rabbi Yossi, no, the walled cities will not be preceding the unwalled cities to read it on Thursday, which is the 13th. Rabbi Yossi says, no, both the walled cities and the unwalled cities will read it on Friday, which is the 14th of Order. So again, we see our Rabbi Yossi's opinion could be like our Mishnah, that when um, Purim falls out on a Friday, so then both the walled cities and the unwalled cities would be reading Megillah on Friday. So it could be either Rabbi Yossi or Rebbe. My time of the Tanakama, how come the Tanakama says that the walled cities would actually read the Megillah on the 13th on Thursday? So the Chsev, as the Pasuk says, Bichol Shone Vishone. Um, like every single year, that just like every single year, the um, unwalled cities read the Megillah on its proper time, on the 14th. So here also, this year also, the unwalled cities are going to read the Megillah at its proper time on the 14th. Now, as well, and each, and each one has its own individual day, it's only individual time to read Megillah, right? The, you, the day that the uh, unwalled cities read Megillah is different than the days, than the day that the walled cities read the Megillah. And therefore, if we're saying that the unwalled cities are reading the Megillah on Friday, which is the 14th, and Mele, the walled cities cannot be reading the Megillah on Shabbos, and, and also we learned the other day, Velo Yavor, that we don't read it after the after Purim, so therefore Mele, the walled cities have to be reading the Megillah on the 13th. That is the opinion of the Tanakhamit. So, Afkan Ayoruz by Baal Asr, that the, that the um, unwalled cities read the Megillah on the 14th, which is Friday, Uzmanu Shelzeh, Lozmanu Shelzeh, and the time for the walled cities to read the Megillah is different than the time for the unwalled cities, i.e., the walled cities read on Thursday, which is the 13th. Ve'ema, Pechoshone Vishone, Makhoshone Vishone, Ein Mukafin, one second, but Tanakama, just like every single year, 
the walled cities do not precede the unwalled cities in terms of when they read the Megillah. So Afkan Ein Mukaf and Kodman La Yaros. So here also the walled cities are not going to precede the unwalled cities to read on Thursday. Shiny Achad Lo Efshur to which the Kam Tanakam would say yes. While in most years the um um the 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 unwalled cities are reading before the walled cities. In this case, what do you want me to tell you? The walled cities cannot be reading on Shabbos. It's also a different, they read at, at a different time than the unwalled cities and they can't be reading after Purim. So they must be reading it on Thursday. And, and yes, it's going to be the, the wall, the walled cities will be preceding the unwalled cities. What do you want me to tell you? Says the Tanakama. My time with Rabbi Yossi, Yaakum Rabbi Yossi says that both the walled cities and the unwalled cities read the Megillah on Friday. Well, the Choshone Vishone. Because the Pasuk says every single year, <laughs> year we have to equate. Makoshone Vishone and Mukaf and Kodun Layorish, just like every other year, the walled cities do not precede the unwalled cities. So Afkan and Mukaf and Kodun Layorish. So here, the unwalled cities, uh, the, the walled cities do not precede the unwalled cities, i.e., both the walled cities and the unwalled cities. Read the Megillah on Friday. Vem Bukhoshone Vishone. But one second, let me say that, well, just, yes, but just like every other year, the unwalled cities and the walled cities have different times. So so we should say also that this year as well, the walled cities and the unwalled cities have, read the Megillah at different times. And yet Rabbi Yossi is, 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 is proposing that the walled cities and the unwalled cities read the Megillah together on Friday. Shiny Yachad Zul Efshir to which Rabbi says, what do you want me to tell you? It's not possible this year. Yes, most years, um, the walled cities and the unwalled cities read on different days. However, um, in, 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 in this, in, in this case, when Purim falls out on a Friday, the Lamaisa, they're both going to be reading on the same day because the walled cities cannot be reading on Shabbos. What do you want me to tell you? Says Ribiosi. Friends, let's move on. Vesova Rebbe, Ayos lo da chinon, Lioma Kniso, one second. Does Rebbe really hold <laughs> that the, um, unwalled cities read the Megillah on Friday rather than m- moving forward to Thursday, the Yoma Kniso? We are Tanya, we tackle in a vice of Halios Bishabos, that if Purim falls out on Shabbos, so Kfarim Makdim in the Yoma Kniso, the villages Go early to the Yom HaKnisa. Vayoruz Gedolos. Koren Be'erev Shabbos. And the large cities read on Friday. So again, so, so, so Purim falls out on Shabbos. So then the villages, the people in the villages, they proceed to the Yom HaKnisa, to Thursday. Um, the people in the large cities read on Friday rather than Thursday. Um, Okay. And the walled cities read the next day on Sunday, which is two Shushan Purim. Rabbi Omer Omer Ani says, Rabbi, that since the um, um, cities are being pushed off from the normal time, i.e., normally they would be reading on the 14th, but this, week, this year it's Shabbos, so therefore um, it's getting made earlier. So Rebbe says, look, once already we're not reading it at the proper time, they should read it on Thursday. And yet when Shabbos, when, when Purim falls out on Friday, he's saying that they just, the, the cities read it on Friday. So, which says it's not really such a strong question because the reason why Rebbe says that when Purim falls out on Shabbos, so then the, 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 the unwalled cities get bumped up to Thursday. It's because, well, <laughs> since it's being pushed off anyways, it, they're not reading it on the proper time, which is Shabbos. So then once already we're pushing it off, so push it off to Thursday. However, in this case, when Purim falls out on a Friday, there really is no reason to be pushing off, um, um, uh, Megillah reading for the unwalled cities, argues Rebbe, and therefore they will um, uh, read the Megillah on Friday in the unwalled cities. In fact, the Gemara, Kiman Azla, the Amr of Chelbo, Amr of Huna. 
Who does the following statement of Reb Chelbo in the name of Reb Huna go like? Purim Shcholios be Shabbos. Okay, if you have Purim that falls out on Shabbos, Hakol Nidchin Yom Aknisa. So then everybody gets pushed off to Thursday. Hakol Nidchin Sagadat Tichvayikem Ukafin. What does it mean that everybody gets pushed off to Thursday? What about the fact that the walled cities are going to read it on Sunday, which is Shushan Purim? The Avdi Lamacha that they do it on Sunday. Ela Kol Anidchin Yidach Liyom Aknisa. No, anybody who's going to be getting pushed off, i.e. The villages, the the unwalled cities, they get pushed off to Thursday. Command Kirebi, that's like Rebbe who says that when Purim falls out on Shabbos, so since already the villages and, and the large unwalled cities need to get pushed off already, they're not going to be reading on Shabbos, so then already push it off to Thursday. That is like Rebbe. Okay. My time? Oh. So, but everyone seems to be in agreement that you don't read the Megillah on Shabbos. Everyone seems to be in agreement on that, right? And whether that means that you're therefore going to be reading Megillah on <laughs> Friday or Thursday, whatever it might be, but everyone agrees you don't read Megillah on <laughs> Shabbos. The question is <laughs> why? So says Rabba, everyone is obligated to read Megillah, but not everybody knows how to read the Megillah. Therefore, Rabba is concerned that maybe um, he, a fellow who doesn't know how to read the Megillah will hold the Megillah, take it in his hand, and carry it for Amis Bishusarabim. We have Rena Amis Bishusarabim. And carry it for Amos and Rosh so that he can go to an expert to learn how to read the Megillah. So, Vayinu Taimid the Shofar, Vayinu Taimid the Lulav. And this is the same reason for Shofar, this is the same reason for Lulav, that we don't shake Lulav on Shabbos, we don't um, um, blow Shofar on Shabbos, and here also we do not um, read the Megillah on Shabbos because we're concerned that a fellow who does not know how to read Megillah might carry his Megillah with him for Amos and Rosh Hashanah in order to find an expert to learn how to read it. And of course, we do not want that to happen. Rav Yosef Omar says, Rav Yosef, says Rav Yosef, well, it's because the poor people look forward to reading the Megillah so that they can um, get Matanus Lev Yonim. And of course, on Shabbos, that would not be possible. Tanan Amiyachu, we talk a little in a bias like this. Even though they said that the villages can um, go read the Megillah early on the, on the Yom Aknisa when they go to the, to the, you know, the court days in the, in the large cities. Govin Bobayom, the um, poor people risk collect their, their, their Matanus Lev Yonim on the Yom Aknisa. When they read the Megillah, Mechal Kim Bobayim, and they give out the Matanos um, Savionim on that day. Afapisha Amru, Adrab Mishum De Amru Hu. So the Gemara asks a technical question, which is, what do you mean that even though they said that we read the Megillah early, they do Matanos Savionim? It's the opposite. It's Davka because we read the Megillah early. That is why on uh, those days we do Matanos Savionim. Elohol Va'amu Shikfarim. Rather, it's since they said that the villages read the Megillah early on the Yom HaKnisa. So Govin, Bobayom, they also, for that reason, they said they collect Matanos Lavionim on that day when they read the Megillah. Mechalkin, Bobayom, and they disperse, they, 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 they divide them up uh, on that day. Because the eyes of the poor people are looking forward to the reading of the Megillah, that when they hear the Megillah, they know that they can, that there's matanos levionim, that there's a mitzvah to give gifts to um, poor people on that day. Avosimcha in noheges ela bismana. However, um, the simcha, right, the sudas purim, so that th- those mitzvahs are only going to be on the 14th, and not on the day, right? So if they read the Megillah early, you know, during the Yom Aknisa, so Matanus Levionim happened that day because the poor people are looking forward when they hear the Megillah to receive Matanus Levionim. However, in terms of the mitzvahs of, 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 of like the Sudas Purim, that is going to be on the 14th day of Odr. Friends, that was the Avdalad of Masech the Megillah. I think it was Taka, a very interesting daf. We learned lots of interesting things. For example, we said that um, even though mitzvahs, uh, even though uh, reading the Megillah is mitzvahs, nonetheless, uh, women have an obligation 
to read the Megillah because Afinoyu Ba'oso Anis, that they were also included in Haman's schemes. Um, we also learned that we are allowed to uh, learn the Alochis of Purim on Shabbos, right? And we're not concerned that maybe somebody's going to take out their Megillah to go to an expert. No, you're allowed to learn the Alochis of Megillah on um, Shabbos. We also learned the obligation to read Megillah at night and to read it again during the day. We saw a few different opinions regarding what happens when Purim falls out on a Friday. We saw two different brises. Um, the Tanakama of the first brisa says that the um, uh, uh, unwalled cities would read the Megillah on the, with the villages on the uh, on Thursday, and the walled cities would read the Megillah on Friday. The Tanakama in the second brisa says that actually the um, walled cities would bump up to Thursday and the uh, unwalled cities would read the Megillah on the, the regular day on Friday. Rabiosi and Rebbe both say that um, both the walled cities and the unwalled cities would read <laughs> together on Friday. And at the very end of the um, daf, we learned about how come we don't read Megillah on Shabbos. <coughs> we saw a machlogus between Rabba and Rav Yosef. Rabba, of course, gives this very famous reason, the same reason by Shofar, the same reason by Lulav, which is that the Gezer de Rabba were concerned that you might carry the Megillah for Amos and Rosh when you're to, in order to go to an expert to learn how to read Megillah, and if we don't want that to happen, so therefore we say don't read the Megillah on Shabbos. Rav Yosef says that it's because um, when the poor people hear the Megillah, they associate that with receiving Matonos Levionim, which are unable to be um, um, dispensed, dispersed on, on Shabbos, and therefore um, we don't read the Megillah on Shabbos. Friends, that was um, Daf Dalar from Masech the Megillah. I hope you enjoyed it very much. Have a great day. Peace out.